Hello. So, in this example, we are going to apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which is really the sort of moneymaker, the one that everybody actually uses because it makes life so much better. <laughs> so, if you remember when we had to do definite integrals before, we had to like do the crazy Riemann sum with some arbitrary n number of rectangles, and then we had to limit n to infinity and sort of use some weird counting tricks to sort of boil that all down to some countable or some sort of representative thing, something in closed form, and then apply the limit and then get an answer. It was like this whole, it was a whole thing, right? But what the second fundamental theorem of calculus tells us is that if we can get, right, so if we have, let's see if I can do this. So if we have this thing here, we'll call this thing little f of x. If we can find some big f of x such that big F prime of x is little f of x. In other words, if we can find an antiderivative, then it turns out that this thing is just going to equal, uh, let's see, if I'm using big F here, it's just going to equal f of 1 minus f of negative 1, right? The antiderivative of the top minus the antiderivative of the bottom. And this sort of makes sense because the first fundamental of theorem of calculus, remember, told us that in some sense it doesn't matter which antiderivative we choose. So this is telling us just pick one. We don't care which one. Just get one of them, whichever one you like, whatever your favorite one is, and then you can still do this and it will still work, right? So let's go ahead and do that then. So our little f of x then is the integrand, the thing inside. So that's x to the fourth. Uh, plus 2x squared minus 7. So then we want to find the antiderivative, right? So the antiderivative, remember, for um, polynomials, we would just increase the power by 1 and then divide by that number. So we get x to the fifth, but then divide by 5, so 1 fifth. Here, increase, so we get x cubed, but then we divide by 3, and we still have that 2 there, so we get 2 thirds. And here, it's really like an x to the 0, so we end up with just 7x. And again, we could choose any any derivative we want. This is one of them, but we could like add pi on here if we wanted. No one would ever really do that. Like, this is crazy talk. I'm going mad. Um, but I just want to actually, again, sort of solidify the idea that it doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to throw a pi on there just to show that it doesn't matter. Don't do that in your work. You're just going to give yourself more work and maybe make a mistake. Um, so, you know, I'm going crazy here. You can just use the sort of normal, the normal part. Um, nonetheless, this tells me that this, this definite integral, right? So this uh, integral from negative 1 to 1 of my f, which was x to the fourth uh, plus 2x squared minus 7 dx supposedly equals, by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, f of 1 minus f of negative 1. Where now I have such an f. So I would plug in 1. So I get 1 fifth times 1 to the fifth plus 2 thirds times 1 cubed minus 7 times 1 plus pi because I'm a crazy person. So all of this is f of 1. And then subtract f of negative 1. So 1 fifth negative 1 to the fifth plus 2 thirds negative 1 cubed minus 7 times negative 1 plus pi. where this part is f of negative 1. And now I'm going to simplify, right? So here I'm going to get 1 fifth plus 2 thirds minus 7 plus pi minus 1 fifth so minus, let me do it this way, 
Uh, negative one to the fifth is negative one, so that's going to be negative one fifth. That's going to be negative one, so that's going to be negative two thirds. That's going to be positive seven minus, so that's going to be minus seven. And then, oh wait, I skipped ahead. Sorry, I'm not doing this negative yet, so this is going to be negative negative, so that's going to be plus seven. And then plus pi. So then I would distribute the negative, but if I do that, I'll notice that I will get uh, negative negative, so that's going to be one fifth plus one fifth. I'm going to write this in a weird way, but I'm, I'm going to make a cool observation that is not always true. This is true with this specific function, um, just with the way the numbers work out. I'm going to get two one fifths, and I'm going to get two thirds minus minus, so I'm going to get plus two two thirds. I'm going to get minus 7 minus 7, so I'm going to get 2 minus 7s. But then I'm going to get pi minus pi, so the pi goes away. Telling me that this pi up here did nothing, right? Which was the idea, right? I could choose any any year of it if I wanted, if I threw a pi in there for no reason, because when does pi not make stuff better? <laughs> um, it didn't do anything, right? But I noticed that like this thing and this thing, after I sub distribute the negative, they gave me the same thing. I got two of them. Um, and this is an observation that only works sort of because there's something very special about this integrand. It does not happen in general. Um, but I can sort of put this together then. So I'm going to get two times, let's see, common denominator would be 15. So that's going to be 3 plus 10 minus 105 over 15 which is going to get me what? Uh, so that's 105. Looks like a three. Uh, so that's gonna be 13 off of that, so that's gonna be 92. So negative 92 times two is negative 184 over 15. 184 is not divisible by five or three, so that is my answer. Boom. All right. So there's something very special about this integral, um, as it turns out, which is, if you remember from pre-calculus, this thing inside, the integrand, is an even function, and my integral is symmetric. It goes one to the left of zero and one to the right of zero. So that together is what made this happen, which is cool. Um, this is actually a property of integrals that, you know, if you go sort of further with integration, you will uh, sort of develop that as an official property when that works. Regardless, again, the whole idea here with the second fundamental theorem is I didn't have to do any of that crazy Riemann approximation nonsense. There's no limits. Go I mean, there are limits going on, but there's no limits I have to actually explicitly myself calculate. Um, all I had to do was find an antiderivative, any antiderivative. I could even throw a pi in there if I felt like it. I wouldn't if I were you, but, you know, I'm clearly not sane, hence my choice of profession. <laughs> um, and then my integral is just that antiderivative at the top number minus that antiderivative at the bottom number, and then calculate. And that got me my answer. Notably with the, the pi canceling, which is why it didn't matter. Okay, so that's that.